Right, so we're looking at the navicular drop and drift, which looks at uh, movement within the sagittal plane and the transverse plane uh, of the navicular. The reason why we do this test is to assess whether there is more motion in the sagittal plane or the transverse plane, um, and then we can make inserts accordingly. So if there is more movement within the transverse plane, i.e. more drift, we would then look at a casted bespoke device that would incorporate a cup around the heel to prevent motion. And if there is more drop, we could look at our flexible insoles, which we could increase the height of in the medial longitudinal arch. So what we're doing is we're starting um, by locating the navicular. So if we go along the medial column, we will come to a point where we can palpate a bony prominence. Not always easy to find, easier in some than others, as you can see. If I can trouble you to pronate your foot, there we go, got it. So if you're having trouble finding it, just to get the patient to turn their foot inwards and then you'll find the prominent point. So it's just there. So I've placed a cross on the navicular. What I then do is I take a piece of paper and the first thing we do is look at drop. Before that, we palpate the tailor heads, ensure that the um, foot is in the best tailor congruent or neutral position. Once we've got that, we ask the patient to maintain that position. We then place a cardboard against the foot and mark on there where the drop is. Take the paper, turn it round, place it under the foot. The foot is still held in that position. It does not change. And then we place a pen alongside and do a little line to look at drift. Keeping the paper in this position, we ask you to then relax your foot. And then we once again look at drift, pull the piece of paper out in a relaxed position of the foot. We then recalculate the drop. So once we've taken the drift and the drop, what we then need to be looking at is a process whereby we only take the markings once, once in neutral and once in relaxed. So what I would advise you to do is to place a flat foot into neutral, look at the drop and then the drift, and then relax the foot and look at the drift and then the drop. That way you only place it in neutral once and in relaxed once. So I've got it there. Drop and drift in neutral, then drift and drop. So the pattern is drop, drift, drift, drop. Most common mistakes are palpation of the navicular. So do make sure that you pronate and supinate the foot so you can feel the navicular as it becomes more prominent uh, when the foot is pronating first. Mark on the exact spot and do not repeatedly go from neutral to relax time and time again. Uh, that's when the readings will, will differ. So you really want to stay in neutral once and relaxed once only. Why do we need to do this? We need to do this in order to, uh, to work out, to ascertain whether there is more drop or drift. For example, is there more sagittal plane motion with increased drop or is there more transverse plane motion with increased drift? That would then tell us whether we need a casted device with a more cup control or whether we could just add more height to a flexible insert. If there is more drop, then drift. One of the university flexible inserts with an increased medial longitudinal arch will suffice. If there is more drift, then you really need to look at a cupped device that is taken via a plaster of Paris or a, a foam box cast.